In this week's Two Minute Tuesday, which is absolutely not going to be two minutes, we're going to be answering the following questions. Firstly, what is a fire strategy? Number two, when do you need a fire strategy? Number three, who can create fire strategies? And finally, what makes a good fire strategy? Let's roll the intro. Let's start with what a fire strategy is. A fire strategy is the way in which the fire safety objectives for a new, altered or existing building are defined and achieved. It's a guide to how the building should be built and should function from a fire safety perspective. Fire strategies can take on different forms. However, for a simple building, they could be something as simple as the architectural drawings that graphically show compliance with the requirements of B1 through to B5 of the Building Regulations 2010. For larger or more complex buildings, the drawings would usually be accompanied by a body of text for each requirement of the regulation explaining what's going on, especially in cases where the egress route may change depending on the seat of the fire. The core requirements covered are stated in Part B from Schedule 1 of the Building Regulations 2010. They are B1, Means of Warning and Escape, B2, Internal Fire Spread Linings, B3, Internal Fire Spread Structure, B4, External Fire Spread, and B5 access and facilities for the fire service. So moving on, at what stage is a fire strategy developed? Well ideally a fire engineer should be appointed early on in the design stage, for example at Reba stage 2 concept design. However typically a fire engineer gets appointed around stage 3 spatial coordination. As the building design changes the fire strategy should be updated if the design change impacts on the strategy. By stage 4 technical design, the design should be firmed up and the fire strategy should be approved by the building control body. There will often be alterations to the strategy during the construction phase and these will also need to be signed off by the building control body. Once the building is finished, under building regulation 38, the building documentation including the fire strategy should be handed over to the responsible person as defined under the regulatory reform fire safety order 2005 for the building whether that be the owner of the building or the building management company, for example. Next up, who can create fire strategies? And the answer to this question surprises a lot of people. The answer is anyone can create a fire strategy. Anyone can call themselves a fire engineer and there's no requirement for certification for people to produce a fire strategy. However, if you wrote a bad fire strategy, it would be hoped that building control body would reject it. The reason fire strategies can be written by anyone is in the case of very prescriptive approaches, for example following approved document B, there is very little scope for manoeuvre, meaning there will be little benefit to the strategy being written by a qualified individual. However, just because anyone can create a fire strategy, it doesn't mean that all fire strategies are created equal. So what separates a good fire strategy from a bad one? Here's a non-exhaustive list of six key points for a good fire strategy. Number one. A good fire strategy will stick with one standard or set of guidance rather than mixing and matching guidance. For example, chopping and changing between guidance such as approved document B and BS Trouble 91 isn't a healthy approach, especially when commissioning to a standard is required, which can vary greatly between guidance. Number two, a good fire strategy doesn't copy and paste chunks of guidance without any consideration of how it will be interpreted for the building. Likewise, tweaking a standard fire strategy without taking into account the specific details of the building is also a poor idea. Number three, if you're referencing diagrams from approved document B, copy and paste them rather than redrawing them to ensure there's no misinterpretation as to their intent. But please do note, British standards are subject to copyright, so you won't be able to do that there. Number four, no matter the presentation of the strategy, it's always a good idea to include drawings to make sure all elements of the strategy are interpreted correctly. Number five, ensure you have clear version control for the fire strategies. And if you're reading or reviewing a fire strategy, make sure you've got the latest version and it applies to the building in question. That one catches a lot of people out. Well. Finally, as number six, a good fire strategy won't require significant input from the building control body. Building control are there to check and inspect the work, not to act as building designers. So that's the end of our chunky two minute Tuesday. I hope this has helped bring some clarity around fire strategies. And as always, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.